four or five years ago, I got to the point where if I didn't sort of sort my diet out and just get into more of a routine, it's going to come to the point where I'd have to retire. If I wasn't riding, I'd go out, binge, have a sh eat stupid food and, you know, go out on the booze. I just couldn't face getting in the bath, taking half a stone off. Everyone's getting taller and the weights aren't getting that much lighter. But when I started, a lot of the more experienced jockeys, they would have all been shorter than me. And now every kid that comes through the door is taller than me. I put the weight on kind of the first sort of bit I was injured where I wasn't really able to do anything. My minimum weight was eight stone four. And I went up to, I think it was nine, 10. That was probably the hardest part mentally, putting on so much weight. If you wake up in the morning and you think, God, I got to take four, five, six pounds off, it is just draining, you know? And it puts you in a bad mood before you even start. When I started, you wouldn't eat breakfast, and you know, you just usually be eating one meal a day. Now we're far better educated, we know we need to be putting fuel into the body. Good nutrition improves well being. Um, and it also improves performance. So there's some nice studies which have been done at John Moores University looking at the, the science behind this. And we've known for some time that if you're dehydrated and underfed, you will perform less well. What we propose is to actually eat more than you currently do eat. So typically where jockeys, because they're hungry, are snacking on very high calorie and very high energy dense foods, we're basically switching those for lower calorie, higher protein, higher fibre foods which in, improves satiety and, and decrease hunger levels. So on the face of it, it looks daunting and it, it seems paradoxical to, to eat more, to lose weight. But the evidence undeniably shows if you eat foods that are higher in fibre, higher in protein and lower in saturated fats, you can eat much, much more and lose weight rather than backloading food and eating nothing through the day to make weight and then sort of binge on an evening. In recent years I had the right way of doing it compared to when I look back at me starting off the wrong ways. I think when I was apprentice I'd kind of done things the wrong way. If I had light in say two days time I wouldn't eat for two days but now I know what I can eat what's good for me Instead of stopping at, say, KFC or McDonald's or somewhere like that, I'd, if there was a weight rose on the services, I'd stop into there. Eating-wise, I'll just grab a quick coffee when I, when I get up. And then, depending on you know, my weights for the day, by 9 o'clock, I'll be craving another coffee and something to eat. And I'll, 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 I'll have had a busy two or three hours, so I'll be really hungry. And I'll, I'll need something because I've, I've got a three-hour drive and I could have three, four rides in the afternoon. And I think if I miss that little window of, of food then, I'll be, I'll be hungry all day. We now know that jockeys can take on board a lot more calories than they believe they can if they're taking it on board in the right way and it's complemented by a planned exercise regime. A lot of lads, they have it in their head that if you don't eat anything, you're gonna lose weight. And I found that you've got to fuel the fire to be able to do the graph to get it off. It's very easy to stop eating and stop drinking to try and lose the weight, but and actually over the years, as I've got, I've got older, I've actually learned you have to keep eating and drinking in order to lose the weight. The less I ate, the less weight I lost. It all, the, it all, the whole metabolism seemed, seemed to slow down, and I think just, 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 if I just keep the wheel turning, I was, always, I was always burning something off. If I'm not riding out, then I'd go for an hour walk, take the dogs out, power walk, try and get my metabolism going a bit. I find if I do that, then when I come in, I can have a bit of breakfast and I don't sort of sit there and I feel like I've done something. I personally don't even call them meals, I call them feeds, to be honest. So five or six feeds through the day, small, convenient things that you can basically pick up. Eat on the road if you're in the car, eat at the stables if you're, if you're working. Eat in the morning before breakfast or, or immediately after you've, you've ridden out. High protein, high, high carbohydrates to facilitate your morning duties, then after lunch, reduce the carbohydrates, increase your protein. Protein is great for satiety and for hunger. And I guess a little bit of this comes down to preparation as well. That's a lifestyle change, which if we try to do it overnight, it'll never happen. Yeah, I went to see George Wilson in Liverpool, like some of the other jockeys at the John Moores University, and he, he was fantastic and completely changed my outlook and everything. So rather than 
you know, binge eating on a Sunday night and then having to take four or five off the next day on a Monday. Now I'm just a lot more level now. My diet's a different class than it was. Liverpool John Moores University have a great facility where they can take young jockeys, take any senior jockeys even, who can go up there and spend a day with them and they will assess their fitness, they will assess their nutrition, and they will put in place a scientific diet plan. You're not just a man who sits on a horse anymore like it was 50 years ago. You're a professional athlete, and you've got access to world-class sports science and medical facilities.